Hello and welcome back to the Avoid the Tire Wall podcast. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, Will McIntyre. Will, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Will and uh, I'm 15 years old I'm from uh, Norwich in Norfolk and yeah, I race cars. <laughs> so, uh, which track that you have visited would you say is the most physically demanding? Um, I think that's got to be either Fruxton or I'd say um, Croft. I think um, obviously both, um, Croft is quite uh, up north, bumpy and it's humid. So um, yeah, it's quite challenging. And Fruxton, very, very high speed. Also, um, it's quite difficult on the neck. So. Matty SJ69 says, is there a height limit for single seaters? Um, I'd say just, that I don't think there's a height limit, but you can't be extremely tall because um, Obviously, I think George Russell is uh, very much on the limit of um, being too tall. So, yeah, I think just as, if you're small, the, the better it is. Yeah, because there's that um, famous thing where Nigel Mansell, he got in the car and his head was just sticking over, over the, is it roll hoop? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you see yourself going down a single-seater route, LMP route or GT car route? Because obviously you did Janetta Juniors. Um, I think just Janetta was um, one of the stepping stones into cars, really. So I just wanted to get away from karting and uh, make my way into uh, make my way into cars. So, yeah, I just thought um, Janetta is a good way. And, you know, I don't really know where I'm going to go. Um, obviously, F1 is the dream. I think it's a dream for yeah. most racing drivers. So... Um, hopefully I go that route, um, but yeah, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing, getting good results, and yeah, hopefully that, that will come. Uh, what's your favourite track that you haven't raced on? Uh, Croft. Uh, I really like Croft from Janetta. I think uh, it was my best track last year, and the testing so far this year, I've been really, really good at. Um, uh, do you have any pre-race rituals? Um, not really uh, anything too normal. Just make sure I go to the toilet right before I go out. Uh, just the usual stuff, really. I think um, making sure I'm just really chillaxed. Um, some people like to get revved up before they get in the car. Uh, I just like to be chilled, uh, make sure I don't make any mistakes. Do you not like listen to music? Or... Yeah, I just listen to music. You know, the normal stuff that would chill out. Yeah, what songs? Uh, it's, if it's One Direction, it's okay. Nah, at the minute, I'd say it's a bit of bow disruptor or what, um, or maybe depending on where I'm starting, might be a bit of a uh, grim. Um, yeah, just anything really that that's uh, in the fashion, I guess. Uh, for you, what does the week leading up to your racing, what did your workout program include, what did it all look like? Um, yeah, so I think going up to a race weekend, I sort of start training a bit more uh, of the areas you focus on with racing, um, more neck and uh, stuff like that. So also making sure everything's packed ready and you know make, uh, cleaning everything out especially the suits and helmet because they can get very very smelly so yeah just those stuff really um adrian rj says what is your biggest fear brakes failing into high speed corner that yeah that's pretty scary uh is being a part of the toka package beneficial in terms of sponsorship opportunities uh, I'd say so, yes. I feel like um, with Toka being, uh, especially on ITV and everything like that, um, it's got such good um, viewership, viewership. So I think it definitely helps. Um, yeah, I think um, sponsors really look for how many people interact on the race weekend. And yeah, if you can say that, yeah, um, you're in a Toka package and you're on ITV4 or ITV1 sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's really, really big. Uh, the Veil vale Club F1 asks, how much does having a good social presence help with sponsorship and do you enjoy doing media things? Um, yeah, I'd say sponsorship, uh, well, good social media, especially on Instagram and LinkedIn, uh, really, really help. Um, I know some multiple drivers um, in Porsche and uh, going up the ranks in F3 and F, uh, F2 um, have really good socials and um, they're the ones that require all the sponsorship. So yeah, I think equally, if you want to even get on track or get in the good teams, you got to have a really good social. social. Why did you choose British F4 rather than Italian or ADAC F4? Um, first, well, for me, uh, I think um, high tech came to us in the first place. Yeah. I wasn't really sure of doing um, um, single seaters, and uh, because uh, I was trying to be as realistic as possible with uh, my career, my career path. So, yeah, I think um, 
obviously high high tech uh, came and yeah um, they're one of my favorite teams last year a really really nice bunch of people so yeah I decided to, and I think personally um, uh, I've really liked the British um, staying on a staying in a token package and um, yeah I feel like that's a really well, why I joined. Uh, apart from the obvious being like the lack of roof. What's the biggest change when tra transitioning from Junetta Junior to British F4? Uh, I think the actual racing um, with uh, F4 uh, is really vital to just be at the front, um, especially with British really tight tracks, um, not like um, Italian or um, the other ones where it's quite uh, open GP tracks. Um, pole position is really, really crucial. Uh, I feel like that's what... Uh, Alex Dunn did last year, and that's why he dominated the championship. So, I feel like if you can get a, get the car on pole, no one's going to pass you as the dirty air is massive. Uh, I've got a couple of quick fire questions, and we got a general knowledge quiz. Um, day race, day race or night race? Night. Clockwise circuit or anti-clockwise circuit? Anti. Don't do it much. Petrol or electric? Petrol. Senna or Schumacher? Senna. Automatic or manual? Automatic because I can't be asked to do a manual. Fair enough. Wet track or dry track? Can I say mix? Uh, cold and dry or warm and damp? Warm and damp. Porsche or Porsche? Porsche. Uh, would you rather win loads of titles and very few races or win loads of races and no titles? Loads of titles, very few races. Indy 500 or Monaco Grand Prix? Indy 500 because you can actually race. In yeah, like I watched it this year and I mean I was rooting for Pato and then he crashed and I was like, it's okay. Okay, uh, general knowledge quiz. Best score is nine, worst is two. One of the other F4 drivers who I'm not going to name earlier got seven. Oh God, okay. Right, so uh, longest British circuit? Silverstone Grand Prix. Yes. At the 2008 Turkish Grand Prix, which record did Rubens Barrichello break, which has since been broken by Kimi Raikkonen and Fernando Alonso? Most F1 races. Yeah. Uh, oldest driver to finish a Formula race. If you need a hint, I've got quite a good one. What country is he from? I don't know. Uh, it's a very, very expensive sports car named after him. I don't know, Maserati? Uh, Louis Chiron, age 65. How many titles did Fangio win? Five. Correct. You know the years? You don't get bonus points, just show it off. 1951. Yeah. 1950. I know one was in 1958. You That's not oh. correct. Oh, well. 51, 54, 55, 56, and 57. Oh, 57. So that's, uh, uh, which three races make up the triple crown of motorsports? Indy 500, Monaco Grand Prix, and Le Mans. Correct. Can you name the only driver to complete the triple crown? I think, is it? Oh, no, I forgot his name. It's like a grassy, it's like a little mountain. It's like really grassy. Hill? Yes. Is that his first name? Uh, I'll give you Hill. Graham Hill. Graham. How many father-son duos have won an F1 title? Uh, Rosberg. I'm going to go with three. Two. <laughs> Half a point. Can you name the duos? KK Rosberg. Yeah. Nico Rosberg. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're Damon and Damon Hill. Yeah. Hills, yeah. Uh, which team did Nino Farina win the 1950 title with? And it's not the glaringly obvious one. Alfa Romeo. Correct. How many pole positions has Max, Max Verstappen had in Formula One? Uh, I know it's just got, I think it's like 35 or something. 25. Thank you for watching this week's episode of the Avoid the Title podcast. And thank you to Will for doing this interview. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>